So it's that time of the year again. When all the men who usually send you sexist jokes will send you happy Women's Day messages, and most of them will be forwards. We, the women, will be the topmost trending topic on Twitter. Uh, Facebook will be overloaded with mushy pictures. TV channels will run a video or two uh, celebrating women, somewhere in the middle of non-stop item songs. Uh, the viral fever will upload another satire on YouTube about how much we respect women in this country. And of course, there'll be the feminist voices saying how it's actually a shame that we have just one day dedicated to women. My talk today is simply about being a woman. It sounds like a cliche, I know, uh, but from where I am today, it's rather interesting to ask this question. What does it mean to be a woman? So I was not born with the right to call myself a woman. I was born in a male body. And I actually couldn't imagine myself as anything but a woman. And among women, Madhuri Dikshit, no less. But technically, legally, socially, I was not a woman. So today, when I'm on this side of the gender divide, it seems fair to ask, what does being a woman mean to me? Had you asked me this question 10 years back, my answer would have been straightforward. I would have said, being a woman means having the female form, having long, beautiful hair, to be, to be able to go shopping and buy pretty dresses, to be able to wear earrings and shoes, pretty shoes. Actually, to be able to call ma'am or ms, just to be seen as a woman. Looks. I figured that that's the clincher for being a woman. Perfect hair, perfect eyeshadow, perfect earrings, perfect shoes, perfect, perfect, perfect. In the earlier days of my transition, I used to go nuts choosing the correct earring or the correct shoes to go with my dress. I would spend hours applying makeup and almost always get my hair stuck in the blow dryer. I still do, by the way. I did all of that, and yet it never seemed like it was good enough. It never felt like it was perfect. Then I thought, maybe it's my body. Maybe it's because I don't have that perfectly slim yet curvaceous, hourglass-shaped Malika Shirawat body. I mean, of course, that's what being a woman is all about, right? Like, if you could measure the percentage of your womanhood on a scale, the scale would obviously read 0% to Malika Shirawat. <laughs> and since I'm not here and can never be, what does it mean for me to be a woman? The kitchen, a lady I know said. This, again, was soon after my surgery. Now that you're a girl, she said, you must know how to cook. <laughs> And, you know, I've grown up loving my mother's food. And when I look at her, I always feel like there's something surreal, something beautiful about creating a meal and feeding someone you love. And yes, I have cooked a one-off Rajma Chawal for the people I love. And the idea of baking cakes intrigues me. But for the large part, <laughs> I'd rather have others show their love to me through cooking and I choose other ways to do it. So aside from making Maggie noodles sometimes at midnight, I'm pretty much zero at cooking. And that has earned me many a disapproving look. And I've lost several points on that whole womanhood scale thing. So then what does it mean for me to be a woman? I got thinking. What is that one proverbial day when they say to someone, today, You've become a woman. That undeniable monthly reminder that you're doomed to be a woman. Well, you see, even there, biology failed me. I don't have that monthly alarm system. Although if you were to ask my close friends, they would say that 
I surely PMS more than once a month. But of course, that doesn't count. Plenty of men PMS as well, right? <laughs> now, the absence of that periodic stamp of womanhood has another underlying implication. This elderly gentleman once asked me, for the surgery of yours, did they give you a uterus or not? I said, um, no, uncle, but they gave me a vagina. <laughs> and he said, that's not good enough. You can't make babies. What was the bloody point then? And there it was. For him and many, many others, my being a woman means nothing if I can't give birth. It doesn't matter that if I want to be a mother, I can still choose to bring a child into my life. I can still give him or her good values. I can love him or her with all my heart and soul. What matters is that I don't have a uterus. So far, not doing so well on the womanhood scale, am I? Well, I find myself to be a bunch of contradictions. You know, I love my job. I am actually a screenwriter. I write for Hindi films. I love my job, and I, I love the fact that it allows me to work from home. But I also like going to the office and working amongst office gossip and politics. Uh, I like to be well turned out and with perfect hair. But I also love to cycle around on the humid, bumpy roads of Bombay. And my bike helmet invariably gives me bad hair days. I don't care much for makeup or earrings anymore. Although I do love shoes, but I mostly have to buy men's shoes because they don't have sizes for my gigantic feet in the women's section. I love kids, but I'm also scared of them. I like shopping, but I can't tell silk from polyester or chiffon from Georgette. Now, some people would think that that's what being a woman is all about, being confused. <laughs> Here's what I think. Somehow, for us, the idea of being a woman translates to these bullet points that we must tick to feel worthy of being a woman. Looks, kitchen, marriage, motherhood, career. Somehow, our worth is always derived from outside us, not within. Most women are always trying to measure themselves on the scale of an ideal woman, seeking approval, trying to fit themselves into these predefined molds of how the world thinks a woman should be, how she must balance all aspects of her life impeccably. And to be fair, I do know that a lot of us here are more liberated than that. And yet, don't we still find ourselves getting caught in those inescapable traps You know, last year, after about six years of struggling in the proverbial lanes of Bollywood, I was offered a film to write dialogues for. It's a lovely screenplay by Alankrita Srivastava. And it, it would probably be my first released work later this year. Now, since fate is funny, uh, the title of my first release had to be Lipstick Wale Sapne. <laughs> It's a story of four women who live oppressed lives and yet somehow never give up on their dreams. And when I gave voices to those women, they also gave me something. They made me see that underneath all these bullet points, all these traps and molds, the one common thread that runs through all of us women, the one thing that defines us is our strength our courage to just be. Biology may not have made it easy for us. Society has certainly not made it easy for us at all. And yet, we forge on with that silent, smoldering strength. In our own ways, at our own pace, we tap into that courage to carve our own definitions of who we are and what it means to be us. 
And I feel really fortunate to share that strength with all of womankind. So what does it mean to be a woman? There's no one answer to that question. There are three and a half billion answers because there are just as many women. And each one defines her own womanhood. Ten years ago, I thought looking like a woman defined a womanhood. Today, when I'm sweating it out on my cycle, I feel like a woman. When my eyes well up in the movie theater, I'm a woman. If a guy hits on me, or if a woman hits on me, it makes me feel like a woman. If a man makes way for me out of respect, it reminds me that I'm a woman. And when I'm traveling alone late at night, the fear of rape too reminds me that I'm a woman. When I finish writing an intense scene between two angry male characters, I'm a woman. When my mother gives me her clothes and my father gives me his sports shoes, when my nieces run into my arms screaming bua, I don't care about the scale of womanhood because I am a woman. And often enough, it's a bloody pain in the ass. But more often than that, it's beautiful. Thank you.